Hello guys, it's Hags here from Perth. I just wanted to take an opportunity to show you exactly how to fit one of your guns into the double alpha holster if you're having any issues with wobble or play and it's different between the same model gun. And what I really want to emphasize is that there are actually adjustments you can make to the insert, the block that goes within the body of the holster and the trigger retaining part inside there that actually locks the firearm in place. Before I do that, I also want to demonstrate that there are significant differences in the tolerances or measurements rather of the same model gun in the trigger guard. And that's generally because of the coating. So I'll just take a measurement across there. And on this gun it's 9.07 millimeters. On this gun, 9.30. So there's quite a little bit of difference there in that part of the trigger. And on top here, we've got a 9.25 versus 9.8.99 on this one. So that little bit of difference between the two trigger guards will make these guns fit one a little bit loose, which doesn't bother me at all, or two nice and snug because it's got wider or a thicker coating on the trigger guard. There's also wear issues we've got to take into consideration. But now that we've shown you that there can be significant differences in the thicknesses of the coating, which changes the dimensions of the trigger guard, these can only be made to one dimension. And they're all made on the same machine, so there shouldn't be too much difference in the holster itself. But during transport, wear and tear, um, things change and I'll show you exactly where you can make small adjustments to make it fit your gun a little bit better or to make your holster fit your gun better. So we'll take this guy apart and I'll show you exactly where you can do that. So there's two screws in the back of the body that you can remove to separate the insert from the body of the holster. Once those are out you can get the insert out, just like that. Now the insert has really got four parts to it or three parts to it. There's the outer body, which is very flexible. Note, this is the part that holds the trigger guard. This is where you're gonna get your excessive wobble. And then there's the part inside there that actually locks over the trigger guard to lock the gun in place. So to take this apart, you'll notice that there's two pins. Drive them out from the side where they're not exposed with a punch. There's one out. Two out. Those are the guys that hold it together. Once that's done, You'll find that this part that holds the opposing magnet will just drop out. There's one part of the magnet. It's really dirty. Needs a good clean. And the part that holds the trigger or holds against the trigger guard should just slide out. A little bit difficult, but we'll get it there. I haven't done this for a while. Ah, oh, there we go. We've got to remove this guy. That'll make a big difference in getting it apart. Slippery hands. There we go. There, so it goes in like that because there's a little brass threaded part there that it can't come out past in the front so just lift that out and slide it out that way sorry let me get back into camera view just like that okay so now we've got the body of the insert void of its trigger lock mechanism and that's got quite a lot of wear on it so you want to keep these clean so the first thing I'm going to show you is how this holds onto your gun. It pretty much just locks in over the trigger guard, just like that. 
the trigger rod fits into there and the whole system locks in place. Or it might be that way to be more exact. So if you're finding that your trigger guard is not going in there, it's too tight, you can use a little file to touch that up by taking material away from this edge that's straight. Just a few strokes at a time until you get a good fit. This one fits really, really nicely. There's absolutely no movement between the locking part and the trigger guard, and that is exactly how it works. On the other gun, which has got different tolerances, there's slightly more play, but it still does a good job retaining it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So as I said, if you, you have to take it apart to figure out which part of the block is not tuned enough or doing its job correctly because of the differences in tolerances on the trigger guards to figure out which one needs work. So if you find that your trigger guard fits in nice and snug in there, you've got no issue with this part. If you find it's tight, you can remove a bit of the plastic with a little file till you get a good snug fit. That takes care of that part. Now, while we've got that out, we want to check the second part that holds the firearm stable. And that's the actual body of the insert. And as I said, this is flexible. So if we try and slip the trigger guard through there, it's pretty loose. If we tightened it up by squeezing it, we can make it virtually impossible to get it in because it's a flexible part. Now, what affects that tension on there? Well, that's the body. The more we squeeze these two sides of the body in, because it's aluminum, it's pretty flexible, but it stays in position when it's being pressed slightly together. That'll transfer into squeezing the insert together, which will give you a snugger fit on your trigger guard. So let's do that. When this is inside, in its place, and mine's pretty tight already, it's transferring its energy into the sides of the insert and the trigger guard is pretty snug in there with this gun. With this gun, it's a little bit looser. I could go a bit tighter to make it better for both guns. But the important thing to remember here is that without taking this part out, it's going to be a little bit difficult to figure out whether your issue is with the part that retains the trigger guard, where the trigger guard goes into that slot, or if it's just in the body. You could just test that part without taking it all apart, but you still need to make sure if you're having issues that it's not that that's too tight or too loose. So let's take this body out again. And really all you need to do is just push these two together. And you put a bit of weight on it. And then when you put your body back in, it'll transfer to the insert. I've gone a bit too far with that one as usual. Get some off there. There we go. So that tension we've put on the outside of the holster body is now transferred to the plastic insert. And it should, look at that. That is, look, I can't even get it in there without using a bit of force. But to draw it is not hanging up at all. And remember, that's without the trigger lock insert in place. So we're getting a feel for the actual body of the insert by itself. We already know that that part's correct and holds pretty tight with no wobble. Now we're just sorting out the balance and there is no flexibility in there at all with this gun. With this gun it should be a little bit looser, but it's better than it was. So now that we know we've got the tension right on the outside of the body, which is transferring to the internal sides of the block, we can take it out and put it back together and we should have a better fitting gun. Now, let's see if we can remember how to put this together. There we go. That part goes there. We line up those holes. Drive one of the pins through. Sorry. 
sorry, let's do that there where you can see. And the second pin. I want to get those through to the other side because this is the side that sits in the, ba in the back of the holster body. And we don't want them making contact where they don't need to. That's fine. Let's drop that one a bit more. Right. We'll put that in after we've put the body back in. The insert, rather. That's nice and tight now. I really like that. So that's pretty much how it's going to be. And I love that fit. There is no wobble in that gun. Yes, I have a muzzle support on it. But that fit there between the trigger guard and the holster is really nice and tight. And it's nice and smooth as well. There's no hanging up when I draw it. And it's locking onto the trigger guard as it should. So I'll just put back the screws that need to go back into it. get to that one. There we go. You don't need to put this all the way in. It's there so you can reset the holster in case you miss it when you reholster the firearm. Just a little bit exposed is good so you can get to it. And the other two screws that lock the block to the body of the holster. These don't need to be over tightened, just snug because they seem to tighten themselves up over time and they need a good crack to get them apart. That's about it. Done. So we've added some tension to the body of the aluminium body which transfers to the block. Because it's flexible it retains that shape now and gives us a much better fit to the firearm and we already worked out that our locking block inside there fits the trigger guard absolutely perfectly while i'm here i'm just going to show you one more thing i like about these holsters from double alpha is the fact that you can remove them from your belt for transportation without adjusting or losing rather any of your settings so that's your holster ready to go you take it apart to put in your bag one screw needs to be removed from the back and the whole body comes off retaining your settings that you have on the ball joint for height, angle, forwards and backwards. So that's a really, really good feature. And then you can pack it away, put it in your suitcase, unpack it, put it back together and you haven't lost any of your settings. I hope this helps you understand that you can make some little modifications or a little bit of tuning to your holster body, the insert, and get a better fit for your firearm. Thanks for watching. Cheers.